Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's virtual coffee break with Chalan Aras. Uh, Chalan, why don't you uh, just introduce yourself and give us an idea of what you do here at Citrix? Good morning, I guess good afternoon, good evening, depending on which time zone you are joining us from, whichever geo you are joining us from. Uh, my name is Chalan Aras. Um, I'm a Citrite of more than eight years. And I'm, uh, I run the SDUN and security areas within the company. So anything that carries the bits of, for your applications, whether they're coming into the user or going out to the cloud, uh, generally passes through the products and services that my team and I uh, are, are offering in the market. Awesome. So as we get started, I'll just note that we're recording this session and we will share it via the Citrix Developers YouTube channel. Um, so no NDA content, please. I know our partners are keen to talk about specifics, but uh, this is not the forum for it, for anything under NDA. And the way this works is that uh, you can ask questions in the questions panel, type them in, or if you'd like to actually uh, chat uh, with Chalan, um, please raise your hand and uh, we'll pick that up and open your mic and you can ask your question verbally. So, uh, yeah, we are very much open for questions. And uh, yeah, as we as we let people get into gear, I'll, I'll just mention we were just talking about this before we opened the mics that our very first uh, session on Converge, our very first Q&A was on SD-WAN. It was Baz, I, I will butcher these names because I don't speak Dutch, uh, Baz Staplebrook and Ruud Hunt uh talking about why multi-cloud strategies need citrix sd1 i'll actually paste the link to that into uh the chat here because uh it's it's a good one um oops wrong link well, in honor of their questions i i picked my dutch uh coffee mug today so good oh, to go. yeah we've had a lot of dutch representation at the uh in this event so yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is like what they what they put in the water in Holland, but everybody loves Citrix. Oh, okay. yeah, good thing we love it. There's the, there's the link there. So anyway, let's see what do we have. Okay, so I mean I'm I'll certainly kick things off. So my I've I've been at so I'll, my confession is I've been at Citrix four months, and three of those months have been completely occupied with putting uh, Converge together with Sunny and the rest of the team. So um, I'm coming to this fairly, you know, fairly, uh, was it a blank slate? So my understanding of SD1 is that it is technology for connecting, securely connecting um, different networks. So say maybe branch office with head office, uh, and we saw Baz and Rude explained how you could use it to maybe uh, connect your data center with two different clouds and have traffic traveling, um, you know, from the data center to each cloud and even from one cloud to the other so over that secure channel. Is that, do I kind of, have I, have I kind of picked up a little bit correctly there? Uh, generally, that that's a good explanation. The broader explanation is that if wherever you are, consuming applications, whether it's your home, your business location, retail, hospital, logistics, etc. Uh, it used to be that you would go to a data center or some our European friends they call data center and you know and consume applications. <clears throat> well that has changed in the last 10 years and most applications are either a in a public cloud as a private enclosed set of workloads or, or even more so, they are software as a service that we are just like this go to meeting or your Zoom or your Office 65, what have you. <clears throat> and many of the participants in this conference who are writing Minecraft, you are likely creating mini software as a service offerings. So <clears throat> in that situation, where the applications need to go and how they are, how we ensure they get there securely and with, with consistent performance, that is the main mission of SD-WAN. So it's less about location because right now I'll pick up our, our little home box that's sitting on the side here and show it to you in a, in a minute. <laughs> but the main objective is to make sure that in this new diversely connected environment where the apps can be anywhere in the world, how do you ensure a consistent experience 
And if you are an IT leader in an enterprise, how do you avoid losing your job because the apps aren't performing well? Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate value of SD-WAN. And the more SaaS is consumed, the more workloads move to cloud, the more the SD-WAN market just keeps going, growing like, you know, that double or triple digits every year. So that's, so when you write your apps, basically, uh, for those developers that are on, on the call, make sure we can find them, make sure they have FQDN that are reachable, <laughs> make sure that they are, they are accessible somehow, because otherwise, if, if the enterprise says, I love that micro app, but I want it to be prioritized, and I want to make sure I can track it, you have to be able to track it. So the more decorated your URLs are, the more visible your apps are, the more the underlying network can serve them well, otherwise they'll be complaining about it. So it's, it's, it's basically layering a level of security and control over what Absolutely. you would have by, by default. And perhaps, and, and I think the way that um, Mass and Rude explained it, a level of performance as well, that they saw Absolutely. measurable, Absolutely. measurable improvements. Right. I mean, if you, if you think about it again, 10, 10 years ago, enterprises were mostly inside. So they had absolute control over their networks. They could see every point of every point of network connectivity, every point there was a router. But these days you're at the mercy of the internet. If you leave it alone, you're at the mercy of the internet. <clears throat> so what SD WAN does is essentially build a over the top fabric that either an enterprise itself can manage or it can consume SD WAN as a service from from a service provider. And it lets you create the the control and monitoring capabilities, and of course, being able to influence how your application should behave by using SD-WAN. SD-WAN is like a, it has super knowledge of what's going on in, by app by app, user by user, destination by destination. So you actually have the control that you need in this diversity of traffic. If you, if you look at a typical enterprise, you have IoT with its thermostats and you know security cameras scanners so on and so forth then you have users that are consuming applications from all over the cloud and if you don't manage that well well everyone gets the worst service they can get probably not the best service they can get and uh, that's why IT leaders want to manage who gets what which application gets what performance security so on and so forth that is the primary job of SDN. right so just to uh, let people know if you maybe came in a minute or too late how we're running this is uh, you can you're free to ask any any citrix related question i guess uh, i can't guarantee you'll get an answer but you can certainly ask any question you'd like uh, via the uh, questions panel in GoToWebinar, or if you raise your hand i can open your mic and you can go ahead and um chat directly with Chalan and ask your question that way. Excellent. Uh, question from Michael Shapansky, and I probably butchered your name, but I will open your mic and you can correct me. Michael. So I'm wondering about uh, what you think about the multi-vendor SD-WAN development, and if we compare to older technologies to connect data centers and networks like VPNs, we, we had all those difficulties with different vendors have different add-ons to the standard protocols and we probably see the same with SD-WAN. So do you expect some more standardizing on SD-WAN? That's the first question. And the second question would be SD-WAN is a play field for, for, for more vendors probably than the usual app and desktop delivery. So Citrix is the big fish for application and, and desktop delivery, but it's one of many in the networks and security environments. So do you ex how do you expect your growth against the big fishes on the network side? Great questions. And I, I'll send you the five bucks on the side. So thanks for asking those questions. <laughs> so on your first question, uh, look, with every technology area, there is a tug of war between having the best value to the customer versus being compatible and interoperable with some existing infrastructure. The way SD-WAN does that today is the underlying infrastructure has a set of standards around routing protocols like BGP, OSPF, so on and so forth. They have been they have been around for a long time and they're very fairly stable. So that is how SD-WAN ensures interoperability at a call it a baseline level. But above that, as you said, every vendor has differentiated their products in different ways. Again, based on customer needs and customer wants. So. We don't, we don't expect that there'll be 
you know, compatibility at the full feature level for any SD-WAN because that really slows down innovation. But we do expect that the more basic level, just like we do with routing today, that there'll be more advancements to provide additional compatibility. Uh, but it's going to be a while. As, as you said, even now after, you know, 30 years of networking, VPNs are compatible. You can't use a client on one to connect to another VPN. And it just takes time because you're, there's a tug of war between innovation and compatibility. So that's the now, MEF, which is a standard body, is wanting to standardize some basic functionality. And we're, we are participating in that. But we do think that right now, that's still a, in a fast growing market. Uh, the first, first, job, first job is to meet customer needs and then over time maybe compatibility. So to your second question, great question, by the way. Look, our long-term belief is that networks serve the purpose of application delivery. And when networks were bought by enterprises solely for internal use, the decision was made on a network basis, okay? But as applications go outside, as as I mentioned earlier in the car, in the car as, as, as enterprises consume more applications as software as a service, okay? The, 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 the decision criteria chain is to, does this infrastructure allow me to consume my applications in the best way possible? As we saw in other, other technology transitions in the past, let's say, with, let's say with voice versus voice over IP, voice was absorbed into the network. Our belief that is that over time, application delivery and security are going to be one unified, one unified solution. And the underlying network functionality will, will remain there, it'll be there, but, this, but the choices will become more of an application-centric decision-making rather than a core network decision-making. Today, there are very large vendor, vendors, as you say, like the you know, Cisco's of the world, so on and so forth, just like there were Nortel's and Avaya's of the world in the voice business, and look at where they are. So these technology transitions take time, but it's really about what is the end purpose that we are, that we are trying to fulfill and the, the purpose is true and, and consistent application delivery. And that's where we think that the game will change. How we compete in this in this very vast market, it, it, is, uh, it, it is of course a long journey that we are in. And we expect to have, you know, have even more of a, a stronger position as we take this forward. For example, with our recent announcement on security. Uh, just uh, earlier, uh, I mean, late last week, we announced a brand new initiative that unifies SD-WAN and security into what some analysts call the Secure Access Service Edge or SASE architecture. That architecture says it's about security and applications. Of course, there are network functions underneath, but it's really about security and applications. So it'll remain to be seen how this truly evolves, but our belief is that generally, if you can deliver applications well, the underlying network functionality will be assumed, and that, that's going to change the dynamic of how vendors play this game. All right. Cool. We have a question in the panel here from Mahesh. How do you see SD-WAN's role in case of platform environment? How can Citrix partners get involved in this offering? So Citrix partners can get involved in two ways. One, uh, we have enabled partners to deliver SD-WAN services through what we call the SD-WAN orchestrator. So you as a partner can take on the mission of serving your customers, your prospective customers, to deliver SD-WAN services as they are through our multi-tenant, you know, cloud-based orchestration service. This way, you don't have to build the pieces. You have to deliver your value add, which is understanding the customer's needs, configuring their networks, mo monitoring them and managing them. So that is a fairly common use, fairly common uh, business opportunity for, ma for many partners, for those who have the application and network experience. And uh, we have, uh, the hundreds of partners doing that. We have about 30 managed service providers, small and large that do that. Uh, and, uh, and, and, that's, and we're growing that space. So if you want to understand how to deliver applications broadly as a partner, this is one good way to go. The second way is to add value on top of that. Our, our cloud service has a very rich set of APIs to understand what can be done on the network and what data can be extracted from the, from the network behavior for, 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 a, for a customer. So if you find that there are ways to better manage the network or capture the data and make new use from that, new use of that, of whether it's for security, whether it's for performance, whether it's for application behavior that a particular vertical wants to perform, wants to do, 
there's a great opportunity. The APIs are rich. The data is growing every day, but as the, as the customer builds their builds their traffic, and this gives you an opportunity to build new value on top of the platform that we may not have envisioned that that you would you'd be able to extract value and charge for. And if you're a partner that's serving multiple customers, you'll be able to aggregate data across the customer, so you can see a trend across. Maybe uh, if you're serving you know 15 different retailers, you can see all their data and look at how that there may be patterns across them. So there are two great opportunities for partners. One, to manage and deliver sd as a service. Two, add value on top with all the rich data that, that we are generating or the customers are generating that we're aggregating that you can put to use. Yeah, and this is a theme that we actually talked about with Yeroon yesterday is that, you know, as we, as we move from uh, products to platform, um, the real opportunities here in that Citrix, you know, we know the application delivery business, we know security. We have all of these services that you can think of as like the Lego bricks to build something. And where we have partners involved in, you know, industry verticals with specific needs, such as uh, financial services or healthcare. You know, there's a great synergy there for partners to take those components and build something and apply their domain specific experience, I think. Absolutely. Let me give you a very local example and you know, and Pat may appreciate that since he lives, apparently he lives very close to me or we, I live close to him depending on how you look at it. So we have a little downtown in my town. Our to my town has 30,000 people and there's a small coffee shop on the little, you know, on the main street in, the, in downtown. And the coffee shop has been there for at least 20 years. You know, three, three, ex three head barista bar with two baristas that are always changing, all college students. And their cash industry was probably as old as some of us are here. Okay. Now, with when COVID hit, they had to shut down. But what happened next was quite interesting. They decided to modernize. They decided to go through a digital transformation. So they ended up upgrading their network. They signed up with uh, DoorDash and Grubhub. And now they started taking online orders, presumably with a if, with an infrastructure like a uh, you know some, some online credit card reader, so on and so forth. So they went through a somewhat of a forced transformation to digitize their business. Okay, now whether they did this on their own or through a partner assistance, I don't quite know. But that was an opportunity that someone placed in front of them, or they were compelled to do this based on, of course, the COVID restrictions. But at the end, they went through multiple changes in a very short time of digitizing their environment and bolstering their network connectivity all the while to imagine if you are a if you're focused partner on vertical solutions for retail as an example you could not only do all of that for them but you could also integrate the value across these and say hey i can tell you your trends right now how many people have signed up for your coffee service how much doordash versus scrubhub business you're delivering how are you performing so there's so many new opportunities when you have this data. We're generating data out the wazoo with this platform. And honestly, I'm not sure we're even tapping into 1% of the value of that data. So there are so many new ways you can help businesses, retailers, hospitals, logistics, you name it, in not only delivering the base service, but also adding value on top of that. Awesome. Cool. We have another question in the chat from Andy McCullough. One of the tenants of SAS, SASE, is log everything. As SD-WAN is positioned to view all WAN traffic, is there any plan to provide more logging slash analytics from a security perspective to enable better visibility, tracking, auditing, for network activity on the SD-WAN overlay? Great question. We are, I think we have the opposite problem. We generate so much data and we're, we're looking at how to, how to manage it. Yes. We, uh, the appliances themselves, which see the traffic, as you said, uh, log many significant events, whether it's, you know, network uh, availability, a particular application showing up, a new device showing up, and how those change over time. Those logs are first in the, in the device themselves, and then they are uploaded into the cloud orchestration system for further analysis or, you know, for storage and then later analysis. So the data is very rich. In fact, we have the, we're looking at how do we preserve that data over time without ha incurring a major cost. But the, the data is mostly there. And if there's, if there are new things that a particular application needs, 
of course, you know, detailed levels of logging can be activated on the platform. And if you find a fantastic opportunity to track something else, let us know and we'll, we'll look at, we'll put that in our roadmap to, to add. What I mean by logging in the platform is that as we collect this data in our cloud service, you as a partner or even the enterprise customer itself has the opportunity to extract that data. Take a look at it any which way you want. You can send it to Splunk. You can, you can use your own system to analyze it uh, and then add value to it. So the data is very rich. It is being collected on the platform. In some cases, we may be summarizing it to, to manage storage versus cost. But if, if, if any of you see an interesting need, please reach out to me or, or my team to say, look, this type of data is very useful to us. Can you help us get access to it such that we can generate more value? And we'll be happy to learn about your ideas and see how we can support you. You promised us some eye candy. Can you show us this magic box? Okay, well, this little puppy is called a SD-Wine 110. And uh, let me show the front first. So you can see the little uh, letters on the front. And these little uh, you know, space age looking things are, are mobile antennas. They're for 4G LTE connectivity. And the reason I have it is, uh, there's a little SIM slot. Let me show that as well. There's a little SIM slot with little AT&T SIM in it as well. So this is one of our newest products and it was initially built for use, use of micro branches. This was pre-COVID and we determined that it would also be a great home use case. And it is, um, so I'm one of the uh, Citrix internal evaluators for the home use case because we believe that the home use case has distinct needs on how to manage a large fleet of products. So we're going through that. And the other thing that's coming out with it very soon, and this is probably something I can share because it's very soon is it says little Wi-Fi in the corner. So you'll have a corporate Wi-Fi signal option in your house. So this product is uh, our highest volume product today for micro branches. And we are seeing a lot of home use cases. So back to some of the other questions, imagine having this for a set of critical employees, whether they are call center employees, doctors, uh, traders, uh, you know, coders that need to be on, on, on call all the time. And what that product does is one ensures that if your broadband network is slow, it'll automatically phase, phase your cellular connection or, or mobile connection in. So you don't see the difference. And some of us that, that live in, you know, fairly urban locations, we may not see the need for this as much, but I would tell you there's so much network variation for those that are at the edge of a network or when everyone in the house starts watching Netflix, that's when, you know, everything goes haywire. The benefit of a separate Wi-Fi is that you're not competing with all the Wi-Fi consumers in the house. The, the multiple users, your thermostat, your cameras, and all the other devices that, that you bought from Best Buy or and stuck it in the house, you're not competing with them because you're on a separate channel. So separate Wi-Fi, separate network connection, you still use your broadband uh, for up, uplinks, but generally speaking, the broadband network is not the problem. There's a lot of capacity, but it's how it's shared. And if it starts slowing down, we'll kick in the LTE, uh, the, the mobile network. That's an example of a, of a device that is for home use or for micro branch use. And it also generates a lot of data as to which apps are being used, what, where people are going. And it is an example of how we are innovating with SD-WAN and Again, look at its size, it's relatively small. Again, um, here's a here's an iPad, for example. It's if you want to do a relative size. Here's an iPad. So it's uh as as it, this is smaller than an iPad, it is thicker of course, but it's an iPad, so it won't uh it and it won't um occupy too much space in your house. And it's a great way to uh, bring network connectivity, critical network connectivity for those who need it. And it's surprising how many people do need it because their jobs have become dependent on, on having a great network. So That's I a guess one of, one of the real benefits is, here is just the ease of use and manageability because I'm imagining that you could literally just ship this to a home user. All they have to do is plug it into their, um, you know, their, their router right. uh, with an ethernet cable and then magically they're Basically, you've extended the corporate uh, Wi-Fi network into their home. That is exactly it. I, honestly, the most difficult part was getting the right SIM because uh, this uses a standard size SIM and 
uh, that's the, that's the one thing you have to order. That was the most difficult part, just getting the right SIM. Uh, right. Otherwise, mm-hmm. and because we were learning, that's that was one of our learning process learning. But if you by default they send you these nano SIMs that are designed for mobile devices, and uh, nano SIMs are too flimsy for a product like this. So that is our one learning. Otherwise, you're right. It, it's setting it up and connecting it less than a minute. Well, mm-hmm. once you have the SIM in. Got a question from Javi. What is the cost or price? So the price varies on how you purchase it. And this product, the way we sell it is, uh, if you just want to buy the appliance and our subscription service, the base price for the, I think without the LTE is 200 some dollars. And with the LTE is in the high 300s uh, with the built-in LTE. So it has local, you almost like an, have an iPhone inside it. And then you, then you add our subscription service to manage on top of that. And that depends on the volume. So this, it is an enterprise grade product. So it is, um, it's probably not as not as low cost as a typical Netgear product you buy from Best Buy, but it has different security levels. For example, it has built-in security and VPN back to your enterprise. So that's why there's a higher higher prices for enterprise. That's, that's the price point. Okay, and I guess this is gonna be the last question. We've got about 90 seconds left. Can this SD-WAN be used for non-Citrix infrastructure where apps or desktop are not deployed via Citrix? Completely. In fact, uh, half of our customers, um, all of our customers use it for many applications. Uh, many of our customers have a percentage of the traffic as being Citrix uh, apps and desktops, but a majority of the traffic is other because you do you do have many other applications in your in, in the enterprise network. So we're really good at understanding applications. We are really good at understanding, for example, Microsoft Office 365, this full suite. So the more SaaS the enterprise has, the more value they will get from an SD-WAN product. Awesome. And that question, by the way, was from Gajendran AP. So yeah, with that, um, this has been really fast and personally very educational. And and I love the 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 look at the actual hardware. And am I right in that? Uh, if you call in the next half hour, we'll throw an, an extra one in free. We'll be happy to send one of these puppies to, to, to whoever that next caller is. No, no. Compliments <laughs> of the SDR team at Citrix. <laughs> it slices, it slices. I'll, I'll get you the box. So. <laughs> All right. And uh, Tara <laughs> says... You're uh, into a product reveal, so great job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mahesh, Javed, and Andy each uh, receive that coveted audio water bottle. I want one of those. How do I get one? Anyway. So anyway, uh, with that, thank you so much, Chalan. Uh, it's been uh, it's been great chatting with you. Thank you, Sunny. And thank you to everybody who uh, dialed in and especially to those of you who asked questions. And uh, as I said, we're recording this and we'll put that recording up in the next few days. All right. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Great conference. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.